not living the house. You didn't have a video camera in my bedroom, <laughs> did you? So we're having beer with Cameron Adams, um, co-founder of Canva and CPO. Yeah. CPO. I know that you are a handsome, eloquent and funny guy. Um, who, who told you that? No, I just know it. It's all on you today. <laughs> When you read up on, on, on your journey so far, um, it's easy, and you read headlines only, which is, should be said, a dangerous thing to do. Very. Um, it's easy to get the perception that you've had an easy ride. Um, you know, you did some cool designs, got picked up by Google, um, experimented with Google Wave, um, free lunches, beer on tap, endless resources, co-founded Canva, now you're on the, in, in the fast lane of a billion dollar evaluation, my perception. Um, is that exactly how it all went down? That's precisely how it all happened. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, we just uh, woke up one day and we're in charge of a billion dollar company. That's great. Um, no, I think it's, you know, looking at headlines and news stories, everything looks like an overnight success. Like, it looks like, you know, someone came up with an idea, executed on it, and that's all they did. Um, but behind the scenes is a bunch of stuff that never gets reported on. Every now and then you'll hear about, you know, a massive failure that happened and then they turned that into success. But all the very small things, all the little things you do, the paths that kind of end up nowhere, or you know, the failures that weren't that glamorous, um, there's a bunch of those that go into it. So before Canva, there's, there's 15 years of my life where I left uni, didn't know what I was going to do, ran some small businesses, partnered with lots of people that I met, some which were slightly successful, some which were pretty big failures. And all that learning just rolls into the eventual outcome. I mean, when you, when you were sort of, you know, burning the midnight door, working in your pajamas, not living the house. You didn't have a video camera in my <laughs> yeah. bedroom, did you? Um, why was the, uh, why weren't you at a job? Like, was there something entrepreneurial in there that made you do that rather than going for a job? Or I think there definitely was. I don't think I was, I was sitting down there going, "Wow, I really need to be an entrepreneur." I really should start camera now. Yeah, um, I really need to be a you know an elite level businessman. Yeah. But you know, at uni, I'd signed up for a law degree and a computer science degree neither of which I really went on to use. Yeah. Um, and, but those five years at uni were really me finding out what motivated me and what interested me. Um, and during uni, I took up a part-time job as a graphic designer. And that's really where my journey began. A lot of entrepreneurs that, that are seeing their companies grow, which is obviously a great situation, still those entrepreneurs or co-founders, um, I mean, they are sort of expected to become executives or you know, leaders or bosses or however you want to phrase it. And, and that's obviously not a skill set that we all just happen to walk around with. That's something you've got to learn yeah. or are even not suitable for sometimes. How have you approached that? Yeah, I think different people are, are definitely suited to different things and I think they also have different styles. Um, so looking at the way my two co-founders and I have, have kind of approached it, you know, they're very much on the business side and the vision side uh, and less on the, the tactical making things side. Yeah. You know, you can be a dictatorial leader or you can be a benevolent leader or, you know, a leader that, that's really interested in your staff or a leader that's really focused on pushing out the solutions. Mm -hmm. Like, you can be all different sorts of leader. And you are the dictator one. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I march around <laughs> firing people all the time. Um, but, yeah, for figuring out who you are, what drives you and what your skills are will kind of tell you which type of leader you'll be. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've kind of swayed more to the very much um, kind of make a leader where I, I work with the people I'm involved in, encourage them to improve their skill sets and help them achieve a great solution. It's the situations today when you sort of walk around uh, at, at the office and you're like, God damn it, I'm not the best at anything anymore. <laughs> that, that is a very frequent, uh, <laughs> frequent situation. Um, yeah, it's interesting. With a, with a startup, you kind of start out as the best in, in, in inverted commas um, and you slowly have to relinquish the different parts. Um, we kind of referenced this article uh, that someone from Facebook wrote I think and the article is titled Giving Away Your Lego um, and the notion is that as you're building your business there's parts that you're really attached to but which you're no longer efficiently doing and it's exceptionally hard to give those up but you have to give it up in order for the company to scale. Talk to me about valuation, because I mean, when uh, as Canva, for example, when that surpasses like you know 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, you know, and so forth, does those numbers mean anything? I mean, the numbers don't broadly mean anything. We're not like itching to get a 500 million dollar valuation or become like the first billion dollar company in Surrey Hills or whatever. Like, it's that's not really our concern. It's more a 
it's a validation that we're building a great company. I've heard you say before when talking about sort of the, the power of or the benefit of working within limited resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obviously hard for someone with extreme limited resources <laughs> to relate to, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I strongly believe in the power of constraints and it's kind of driven by my design background as well because um, design is all about constraints, like what's the size of the page, how many colors can you deal with, what yeah. typefaces do you have, what imagery do you have to work with. Um, and looking at those constraints, you kind of come up with the building blocks that you can put together to make a solution. And I think it's kind of the same thing in, in any area, whether it's, you know, making a design or engineering some code or building a company, you have, you have this certain set of building blocks that are given to you and you yeah. have to make something out yeah. of them. And startups are especially constrained yeah. by time and money, resources, people. Um, so you have to find you know, this really crafty, almost hacked solution to the problem that you're starting with and get it out there as quickly as possible, validate it, get users onto it and grow it from there. Yeah. Um, whereas at a big company, you know, it's hard to do that type of innovation because you're slowed down by process, yeah. um, you've got a lot of money, so that like broadens the field of things that you can do, which yeah. gives you less constraints. Yeah. Um, and the more building blocks you have, the harder it is to put them together into something tangible. Yeah. Yeah. Younger companies out there now should really embrace the fact that they can only do one or two things. Exactly. It's, 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 you know, it obviously doesn't feel like it at the time, no, no. but it is kind of a blessing to kind of have this one track that you do have to go no, down you, you rather than choose from 50 of them. Clarification, you hate its guts. <laughs> <laughs> like generally an entrepreneur or someone that wants to start a company has got this idea. That's the sort of the fun process. And then to the topic of product managers is really sort of not the most sexy thing to talk about. But as soon as you get into to running a company and running a product, that's like the most interesting thing you can think about, the product management. What is a good, what is a product manager from your perspective and, and what is a good one? What is a great one? One of your key roles is communicating yeah. and bringing all those parties together. I've kind of been thinking of this notion of, of healthy tension uh, yeah. at the moment. Um, and you know, designers have stuff that they want to see done, yeah. engineers have stuff that they want to see done, and marketing you know, has, has stuff that they want to do. And each of those teams, in some ways, fights or, or has tension between them, but I think uh, the, the goal to having a well-working company is having a healthy tension between those. So like each of those different parts drives the other parts to do their best. Yeah. Um, and a product manager kind of liaises between all those parts and makes sure that they're not getting too far out of balance or that you know, there's not real conflict happening there yeah. and just helps all three of them come together and push something out at the end of it. But you should never blindly think that there is a solution to your exact problem. Um, so you know, listen to people, take their advice on board, but always adapt it to your current situation and think deeply about whether it's appropriate to what you're doing. Yeah. If you're a cafe, you see a bus roll by, there's a Canva design on it or a barbershop or something like that. I mean, that's got to, that's got to. Yeah, you know. every, every little bit just makes you smile and, yeah. and kind of warms your heart a bit. We haven't seen a bus yet, oh. but we've definitely seen lots of cafes yeah. and barbershops and and businesses using Canva for their, their signage or their menus or their business cards and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And of course a heap on social media and digital platforms as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every time you, you come across one and like, you talk to the business owner who's using that product and how it's freed them up to do other things and explore, explore other things in their business, it just proves the value of Canva to us. Yeah. So is uh, Canva your life's work? It's definitely a big part of it. Um, it's been an amazing ride so far. Um, and I can only see it you know, going from strength to strength. And I've been able to do things on Canva that I never would have imagined doing. And it's been really, really awe-inspiring and also humbling to, to see what you know, a really motivated group of people can put together. Yeah.